Thank you for taking the time to watch this episode of Life Support. If you enjoy the content, we would ask that you like it, hit subscribe, and share it with your friends. Hey, it's so good to have you on Life Support. What we do on this program is we talk about how Christ intervenes in our lives during difficult times. We talk about how he redeems trauma, and I hope it encourages you today. My guest is John Brayland, who is a local pastor here in the Twin Cities area. He's also a consultant who helps pastors when they're going through trauma and so forth. And John, it's really good to have you here. Thanks for dropping by. Hey, thanks, Paul. It's good to be here. So tell me a little bit about that, because I'm used to coaches. I'm used to consultants, you know, as pastors, we have them right. all circling us all the time. Yes. But this sounds like this is a, a different angle for sure. Tell me about that. Well, you know, I think, uh, well, I wrote the book Wounded to Wonderful, and that I think was the first time in my life that I actually acknowledged that, you know, I'm not invincible and neither are any pastors. You always think in, in college and everyone thinks, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the exception. I'm going to be the one who goes the distance. I'm going to have... I'm not going to have any issues, no people problems. You know, my staff's all going to be great. And you realize very quickly, like usually your first week when someone comes and then they don't ever come back yeah, right. uh, or they leave with those bad comments. Uh, but ministry is challenging. You know that uh, as well as I do. I've been pastoring now for 28 years. So I'm an old dog, gray hair, <laughs> lots of scars. We call them trophies that we wear for life, right? That's right. That's right. What kinds of things do you run into? I mean, you're dealing with a wide variety of different types of things. Yeah, so I also serve as the general overseer at International Ministerial Fellowship. And one of the things that we do there is we are a licensing and credentialing organization. So we have just under 1,600 members around the world. So we're one of the top four endorsers for the U.S. Army. So we are their endorsing agency. We're a quasi-denomination. We're not a denomination. We paint with a wide paintbrush. Uh, so we have people from high church and, you know, ecclesiastical focus. And then we have a lot of charismatics, Pentecostals. We even have some Baptists, you know, uh, Baptist, Southern yeah. Baptist, American. Yeah. yeah, it does. You know, we're, we, we, as long as you love Jesus, right? right? So yeah. we're, we agree on, on the big things. Yeah. And so in my work there, I deal with a lot of pastors. Uh, and we, because I, we endorse them, like we sign the ordination forms, um, but I also work with them kind of one-to-one -one as a peer, someone who's not in their church, not on their board. Uh, and so they bring a lot of issues uh, that pastors are having. And what we learned from COVID, because it seems like there was ministry pre-COVID, yep. through COVID and post-COVID. That's right. Uh, and post-COVID, uh, it exposed a lot of cracks in ministry, especially when it comes to pastors. Um, most pastors, not all, but most pastors are focused on platform ministry. Mm -hmm. We get up, we work on a sermon, we deliver it. Uh, people sit and listen. That's kind of how the church has gone. And COVID made us look at pastoral ministry again. So it's how we minister to one another and how we shepherd our congregation. But also during that time, it was the great reshuffle in churches. Yeah. Many churches aren't even back to normal, especially minority uh, churches, uh, they're still 30, 40 percent down. You get inner city churches, 30, 40, 50 percent down. And, uh, and that's been very hard on pastors. Uh, what I say it causes trauma, I don't know if it causes, it, it, some of it caused trauma because people, when they went online, they found out that people are very direct online. It's like they don't have a filter anymore. Yeah. It's like smoking cigarettes without the filter on them. Right, they're just right. unfiltered. They say what they want. And the whole world gets to see it. Yeah. And and that's hard on pastors, especially when they get up again to speak. Now they're speaking to less people. And one of the one of the lessons that, that we learn is that oftentimes p pastors are depressed and mourning the fact that their church doesn't look the same. Mm -hmm. And this still lingers, mm -hmm. even after COVID. Mm -hmm. They're still looking out. And even people they didn't like, now they miss. Yeah, right, That's kind of right. funny, isn't it? But, yeah, would, it is. but you know, that yeah. same person always said the same thing. COVID yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. uh, people jumped churches, for one. Uh, they, they just left, and they went to other churches. So some churches grew, some churches shrank. But 
many churches are not the same. And pastors, those longstanding relationships that they thought were friends are no longer in the churches anymore or their church. And pastors are grieving. Mm -hmm. So it's been hard on them. Yeah, and pastors have a hard enough time anyway developing relationships for that very reason. You ask yourself, how close do I dare get to this person because they may not be here and I might not be here. Right. Right. And those relationships were definitely affected, not to mention the fact that it was exhausting to just try to work through COVID with our families. Yes. And then you come to the church. I remember we were recording our online. We we were down for a couple of months. And I, so we were recording our online on Thursday nights to run on Sundays. I'm sitting there talking to an empty worship center at 1030 at night after the worship team was done. And I'm going like, wow, like this is unsustainable, but you had to do it. You did. And um, I can I can understand what you're saying. Do you, do you find that the pastors now, as they're coming out of COVID, the ones that are still struggling and grieving, do you find that, would you call it a form of PTSD, uh, trauma? Would it just be fatigue, exhaustion? I think it's exhaustion and fatigue. I wouldn't call it yeah. PTSD. I was in the military, so I'm a combat vet. Yeah, well, there you go. So yeah. that's a little, it's different being yeah. shot at than yeah. it is uh, having people leave your church. I'm yeah. just going to say right up front, there's yeah. a huge difference. Yeah. And so, uh, but these pastors, what it causes is it causes depression, causes withdrawal. You don't know who you can engage with mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of people that you thought were your friends, they really use the church like a grocery store. It was yeah. just they went for convenience. But the problem is we as pastors, uh, we're told by Jesus to love people. Mm -hmm. We're told Jesus feed my sheep. So we feed we feed people. That's what we do. We care. We feed. But sheep also bite. You know, people don't realize that. But sheep bite, you know, and they can they can kick and bite and bump. And mm -hmm. uh, but for pastors, uh, say we're, we're, we're at the same church. You're one of my leaders, uh, which is most churches lost about 30% of their leaders left with COVID. Yep. So they just left. They're gone. And trying to find volunteers again is that whole process had to restart again, especially for longstanding people. But uh, we're friends. We talk. All of a sudden, you go to a different church. We don't talk anymore. And for pastors, we think we thought you were our friend, mm -hmm. especially in smaller churches. You think you just move your whole family I'm, I'm fortunate I have a staff. I have a wonderful staff, so I always have people to talk to. But, but you go to some of these smaller churches and some of the pastors I'm talking to, they move their family to the middle of nowhere um, in a town that they're not familiar with. They were told to love these people. The church wanted to, Every church wants to change. That's why they hire a pastor. Oh, we're ready for change. The search they, team says they're ready for yeah, change. Yeah, they are until yeah. you try to change something. That's and then right. all of a sudden that sacred cow, you realize they're everywhere. Yeah. But these pastors uh, have have left. Now people in their small towns, they're, they don't come to church. And so the pastor withdraws. Mm -hmm. um, they become more introverted. A lot of pastors already are introverts. They just don't. We come across as extroverts, but we're very much introverts. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they, they disengage. And once you disengage, uh, you are not going to be as effective at pastoring because your heart isn't in it anymore. Yeah, and it's hard to get that back. It's, it's hard, hard to get, get it back. back. Yeah. So one tip that I've been giving pastors, uh, especially if you're in a smaller town or have a, um, or or if it's a smaller church, even in a bigger town, a smaller church, what I've been telling pastors, and this has been a huge thing, is uh, one, grieve. It's okay to grieve people who aren't out there. Grieve, cry, deal with your emotions, talk to God about it. But second is don't just look at your church. Pastor your community. Mm -hmm. And if you pastor your community, it changes things. Because if you're pastoring a church of 50, 100, 200, 300, and now you're pastoring your community, meaning you have three, four, five, ten thousand 10,000 people in your community, it looks different. Now when you go to church, you have stories to tell. At the ball game, you got involved in this. Right. You did so-and-so's funeral. I always tell pastors, go to the funeral home and offer to do funerals. Just yeah. say, hey, let me step in and do these funerals. If you don't have anyone, I'm more than willing I've done, to do That's really rewarding, actually. It's, it's very rewarding. Yeah. I'd rather do a funeral than a wedding. A wedding, you got yeah. holy cow. <laughs> funeral people are just glad to show up. I know. It's true. Um, one of the things I found really unsettling from a pastoral perspective is I've been here eight years now at the church I pastor. 
it was a it was a turnaround, a restart. Mm -hmm. And I have come to know over all these years the patterns, the the psych, life cycle of a church. So you kind of know, like, if I can, you know, two or three years of this, then this happens, and then that happens, and then you mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you, well, COVID totally turned everything upside down. Mm -hmm. So here I am. You're trying to guide your board. You're trying to encourage your board. You're trying to encourage your congregation. You're trying to figure out if you're doing the right thing, and everything is different. The landscape has drastically changed. Yes. And so I have to guess there's a lot of pastors out there kind of flailing a little bit, trying to figure out, I thought I knew what how to do this, right. and I'm not sure I know how to do anything anymore. During COVID, I, I had anxiety. I've never had anxiety before, but I had anxiety in it. It was because every day, that, that's not an exaggeration, it's mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. I had people say, if you don't make us wear masks, I'm not coming to church oh, ever again. Right. And then others said, if I have to wear a mask, I am never coming to church. Yeah. And then others said, if you don't get up and support Trump, um, we are going to leave because clearly you're a liberal church then. And then others would say, Trump is an idiot. Uh, you can't support him. And, and yeah. so yeah. I ended up reading a book by a now acquaintance of mine called Managing Leadership Anxiety by Stephen Cuss. And it actually helped me get in touch with my own emotions. And I realized I couldn't win. Because pastors, we always want to win. Winning yeah. means you win people over, you preach right. a good message, you lead well. Mm -hmm. But that situation during COVID and even after, there was no winners. You just endured it. Mm -hmm. And helping to see that sometimes you just have to endure. It's not a matter of winning or losing. It's just holding on yeah. and getting through that particular season. And like you just said, that was a huge season, especially for pastors. Many people were tired during that time. A lot of pastors are tired. Um, and uh, a number of pastors resigned. It wasn't as bad as what they were predicting. They, they were predicting the great resignation. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. uh, I speak to Dave Travis. Uh, we're on a Zoom call every week. And uh, he's a huge researcher. He used to be the CEO of Leadership Network. And so we talk a lot about that. He's written papers on it. But uh, the, there weren't as many pastors that resigned. But a lot of them, I will say they're still pastoring, but mentally they've checked out. Thanks a lot, John.